Now let's talk about classifying salts as acidic, basic, or neutral. And as we've just seen from the previous, that, um, let's see, ammonium, sorry, sodium acetate, first of all, it's a salt. And let's redefine salt or define it again. So a salt is any uh, ionic compound that does dissolve in water. So that's what a salt is. Table salt is sodium chloride. We uh, have already calculated the pH of sodium acetate, uh, and we found out that the pH was basic. And uh, what we're trying to say is that uh, acetate is a weak base, and uh, we can calculate its Kb value, and its conjugate weak acid is CH3, COOH. So this is the conjugate weak acid. That's a conjugate pair. Uh, we can look up and get the Ka value of this, which is, so Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And we said, so for its conjugate, the weak base acetate, that it's Kb equals one over Ka for the conjugate. And we got, I think, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. And uh, so weak acids and weak, weak acids have conjugate weak bases. Weak bases have conjugate weak acids. They go together. Um, and if you have, let's see, anywhere between, let's say, uh, 0 0.1 greater than Ka or Kb, who less than, uh, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, that's going to qualify you as a weak acid or base. And if you have a Ka or Kb value that is greater than 0.1, uh, some people say one, but somewhere around there, then you are a strong acid. If you have a Ka or Kb value less than 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, that means you are uh, a, an, an inert acid or base, or also a call, sometimes called very weak. So now let's talk about uh, something. Let's talk about another example. And this time we're going to talk about ammonium chloride. And ammonium chloride is going to break up into two ions. And uh, the ammonium ion has, uh, it's going to be a weak acid. And its conjugate weak base is ammonia. And we have a Kb value on our list for ammonia. Um, and we can find the Ka value. So I think Kb equals 1.76 times 10 to the minus fifth, if I remember correctly. And then Ka here is going to equal 1 over Kb in this case. And that's all well and good. Now uh, let's talk about the Cl minus ion. Cl minus, uh, it's negative. That will tend to be a weak base or a base, we should say. <laughs> That's Cl minus. So we know it's going to be a base. And then we can think about what its conjugate is. So if that's a base, then we add an H plus, and we get HCl. HCl is its conjugate acid, and that is actually what we're going to end up calling this a conjugate strong acid. Because we know that HCl is one of our seven strong acids. That's something we learned in Gen Chem 1. And therefore, Cl minus conjugate pairs, if you have a strong acid as your conjugate, then you are yourself what we would call inert or very weak as a base, meaning it has no influence over the pH. And we can also talk about sodium as inert. Sodium is Na+, plus, sodium ion. 
And it's a little harder to think about why it's inert, perhaps, because if it's an acid, then we would take an H plus away to get its conjugate. It turns out that you can actually, in an interesting way, do that. This is not really at the heart of our class, but for the sake of thinking about sodium as inert uh, and as an inert acid, let's say, we can think about H. And this is uh, the hydride ion. And it's actually H minus, it's not H plus. The sodium is still H plus. So you can think of it as it's a negative one H plus. So, it, you know, anyway, I don't know if that makes sense. It turns out that H minus is a strong base. And that sodium is a inert acid. However you think about it, uh, it is important that you be able to break the sodium off and focus on the acetate ion in that sodium acetate. Now, uh, a couple other examples. Uh, we might do uh, calcium nitrate. And any of the uh, group one and two uh, metal ions are all inert. And we can use the same type of thing as the sodium ion, although it will get more complicated when we talk about the transition metals. So we have an inert acid, I guess, I mean, for a calcium ion, then nitrate ion, so NO3 minus, is going to be similar to the chloride ion. It's going to have a conjugate that's HNO3, which is a strong acid. Nitrate will be an inert base. And you can really do this for uh, basically what you're going to see is you're going to see anything that you have on our table of Ka and Kb values. And we can think of its conjugate as a, um, a part of this process. So uh, I'm looking here. I've got uh, something like NaF. And F is related to HF. HF is a weak acid. F minus is a conjugate weak base. Okay. I'm trying to think of what else we got here. Um, oh, it does get more complicated for something like sodium bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, HCO3 minus is um well so in first we we ignore the sodium because it's we've already talked about how that's inert now we have the carbonate carbonate has an h which means that hco3 minus is an acid and um it's also the con so acid of uh co3 2 minus so it has a Ka value. And then there's uh, HCO3 minus is also a base of carbonic acid. And so this has a Kb value as well. And again, we're talking about the same thing, carbonate having a uh, Ka and a Kb value. If we look at the Ka value, Ka value is carbonic. Uh, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. That's our Ka. And that's on our list of Ka values. Kb for bicarbonate is going to be 1 over Ka for its acid. And if we multiply that out, um, the Kb value... Oh, so the Ka is 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7. So 1 divided by 4.3 exponent 7 minus. I get not 1, 1. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Exponent 14 minus divided by 
one divided by 4.3, x minus 7 minus, and I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 8. That's a dot there. And uh, so it turns out because KB is bigger than KA, that means that this is uh, bicarbonate ion is a better base. So we're going to call this a weak base. And yes, it's complicated, but since it's a strong, so we will always deal with our Ka values in the orders that they occur. And since Ka for this is 2.3 times 10 to the minus eight, that's approximately, or a little less than actually, a thousand times greater than the Ka value up here. So it's going to be a base. We're getting complicated. But, um, but this is a, a potential homework problem as well, is to think of that. Um, more classifying acids, uh, salts as acids. Um, yep. So um, the transition metals, something like Fe, NO3, 3. <clears throat> Well, the NO3-3, the uh, three nitrate ions, we've already said they are inert bases. And their conjugates would be HNO3, nitric acid, which is a strong acid. Turns out there's a list of Ka values for Fe, uh, let's see, three plus, and that's gonna be Ka equals 6.3 times 10 to the minus third. So it's actually a relatively strong acid. Um, and you can set up an ice table around that. Well, all right, how do you do that? Because if it's an acid, then you have to take away an H plus. It turns out that when we will do that, we actually have to consider that there are six water molecules that are surrounding the iron three plus ion. That's gonna be in water. And then uh, take an H plus over here. Your products are going to be uh, H3O plus. And it looks rather unruly. Wait a minute. I know why it looks unruly then. Let's try that again. My eraser is bigger than I want. All right, well, it's uh, Fe3 plus. So Ka is 6.3 times 10 to the minus third. We get Fe H2O 6, 3 plus plus H2O. And now, yeah, there we go. This is an acid. Take one of those H pluses. Straighten this out a little bit. Now we get our H3O plus. Sorry about that. Plus what's left. And there's only going to be five waters left and an OH. And it is plus. Um, two. Because we've given away one of our H's. And that's how you could set up an ice table around this. And you'd still be able to get your concentration of hydronium, which would tell us what our pH is. So that's at least one more thing about that. Um, let's see, let's do another example. And this is going to be ammonium. Uh, hypochlorite, and this is actually um, related to the bicarbonates, though slightly different. So now we have a weak acid, and we have a weak base. We can prove that, and I'll try and prove it by straightening my stuff out here a little bit. Um, so let's see, I know I'm on a tilt for this page. 
So HClO has a Ka value, and down here, uh, NH3 has a Kb value of 1.8 times, oh, 1.76 times 10 to the minus fifth. The HClO value going to my Ka list. Hypochlorous, 2.9 times 10 to the minus eight. And what we're going to see from this is that uh, even without doing the numbers, we can see if Ka for HClO, so HClO is a weaker acid than ammonia, then ammonia is a base. That's because Kb is bigger for ammonia. That means that Kb for the hypochlorite ion will be greater than Ka for ammonia. And this will lead to a basic solution. And that means that if you wanted to set up an ice table for this, uh, to solve this, you would take your strongest thing. In this case, it's a strongest base. And add water. You'd make hydroxide and HClO. And this would have the Kb value for ClO minus. That is one over Ka. And please write and solve for the Kb value for hypochlorite ClO minus on the bottom portion of this page so that I know that you're listening to the video.